Welcome to another edition of In the Weeds with Iker and Layman, presented by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience, and there are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino, but it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful, award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including Blackjack, Blackjack Match Roulette, and Teddy's favorite, Craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts. And to learn more about their gaming promotions and entertainment options, all you got to do is visit Riverwind.com, Riverwind Casino, good times, great rewards. Dead Sooners were on a buy last week so we don't have any plays from an OU game to break down so we thought why not show OU fans some of the things that make Texas a very good football team yeah and their offense as everyone knows is really potent they got really good skill position guys Uh, their offensive line continues to get better and better and you know, whether it's Quinn Ewers, he brings experience, accuracy, um, you know, great deep ball. He's got good touch. Uh, if it happens to be Arch Manning, you get a lot of those same things with some built-in athleticism in there as well. So it's a, it's a very good offense. So we're going to take a look at four plays here in, in this episode of In the Weeds. And the main point, I believe, is just to show how much Texas stresses you horizontally with their run game. And a big part of their run game is the RPO stuff that is attached to their run game. So when you look at this first play here, you've got this you've got this bunch formation to the field. They're running kind of what I would call a down and around concept here uh, into the boundary. You've, you're gonna get you're gonna get a down block here from the tackle. This tight end is kind of kind of secure, and he's working to this backside backer. This guard is gonna pull out for the first thing off the edge. The center, they actually instead of zoning it backside, they actually just keep him on the nose and they bring the guard all the way around for whatever shows up second. And then this tackle is just zoning on the backside. So. That's the run part of their run pass option. But it, it it's pretty simple for, and this is Arch Manning, in at quarterback, you've got these four defensive linemen, you've got these two linebackers, and then you've got this corner, which looks like he's becoming a seventh element to the defense. You only got six blockers because you're in 11 personnel. So... As you can imagine, Ted, Arch Manning can count to seven, which is good, and and does a nice job of reading this out, and he throws the RPO. So you look at at that defensive back kind of walking down, becoming the seventh element. He likes the numbers on the outside, and this is where things get very dangerous because before the season – I wondered if Texas would have a guy that had the juice that Xavier Worthy had a year ago. And Isaiah Bond has juice. Hmm. Boy, once he turns that corner and he hits the gas, he is gone. He, but the he problem can go. Is, and this is what's so dangerous is they've got this thing defended perfectly. Look at that. Fight inside. we got a safety in the alley. We're coming, we're forcing the outside, but we just get right down the middle of the guy. Just keep your outside arm free, and you force him to come right inside to the free player, your safety that's running that alley, and it's a no gain. But you get two head up on a guy, you can't control your gap on the outside, and we're off to the races. It's it's This is option football. This is a modern-day option football where you have to know your responsibility and they've just taken the option instead of doing it all at the line of scrimmage now look at how you have one options that is on the other numbers and the second option is on the numbers in the different direction spreading the entire field 
They make you defend every blade of grass horizontally yeah, with their run game. These, some of these, the quarterback has the option to keep it too. So, I mean, it's modern day triple option football. Number seven's good. Real good. I, I think the one of the morals of the story is with the RPO stuff, the Sooners, you, you have to leverage the football correctly. And you got you to gotta get to the football. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys, you have to sprint to the football because they have a bunch of dudes, but most notably number seven, who when he catches these little RPOs, he can turn a very small thing into a very big play. Like this one, what, a 51-yard touchdown? I mean, just showing the burners. Oh, flex. Oh, it's brutal. That's a no that play should be no game. Oh, look at this guy. Look at that hat. Oh man, that's a that's a nice bucket there, Ted. Look at that thing. That is. That's like an in-between, like not quite a cowboy. Yeah. Hat. That's oh. that's a good size. Oh, though I bet those those are some crisp Wranglers right there. Look at these. I, I could see the crisp. I see the crisp uh the line down the middle of the seam. That's, I mean, that's that's good stuff. I mean, you can't even fault the man. Let's see who else we got in the crowd. Oh, look at this guy. Hold on, hold on. Let's go. Let's go back to this guy. Oh, look at the mustache on that guy. Look at that thing. That's nice. Oh, hold on. A lot of There's a lot going on here. This guy is. I mean, that is, that man is into it right there. That <laughs> man is emotional. Baby. Someone's holding the baby up. Where's the baby? Oh, there's a baby. A lot Checking going on the in the end zone Baby's there. Baby's watching the jumbotron. Hey, don't blame him. Slap hands. All right, this one we we've just got another run concept, and this is Sarkeesian has a lot of variety in his run game. So here you're getting you're getting GT counter to the tight end. So you're going to get this double team, this tray right here. They're going to go back to the out to this backside linebacker. You're going to leave two for the pullers, right? You're going to leave one and two for the guard and backside tackle. This center, he's blocking back. But these guys are pulling around GT counter. Now, you're still in 11 personnel, right? You just have the one tied in and the one back. So when you're in 11, usually you're counting to six. So you've got your four defensive linemen right here. You've got these two linebackers. So I honestly think, and this is Ewers before he got hurt in the UTSA game, I honestly think it would be fine if Ewers just handed this one. But I think he's got his eyes on this backer right here. And the second he squeezes the way that he does right there, he just flips it out there. So it it's just another thing where they are they're running GT counter into the boundary. They're stretching you with this little wide receiver bubble screen again to the field and making you defend every blade of grass, Ted. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, it's all about the fit. Like right there, you could oh, see, no. watch the player at the last second. He's fighting outside, fighting, and then he slings the guy outside. Look at the safety. Now he's cut off and has to bubble to try and get over the top. Just keep fighting across. He's running inside of you. Keep fighting across. This stuff is like the killer. You saw the other one should be a no gain. If you keep fighting across right there, he's going to have to cut it right back into the safety's lap. But instead, you take the easy way out. You think that you can get underneath, and then the safety can't get there, and it's out the gate again. It's you got to play disciplined football. You have to. There are going to be multiple moments, prob probably several of them, in the game on Saturday where it's going to be one-on-one -on -one in space. One of, one of OU safeties, whether that's Robert Spears Jennings, Billy Bowman, uh, Peyton Bowen, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one in space with Isaiah Bond. And you got to make tackles. Yeah. It, it, it's not easy, but these plays, I mean, we just saw one that went for, 50 yards 
this is a ball that is caught five yards. Let's call it five yards behind the line of scrimmage, and it's a gain of 15. If they're able to rip off these types of chunks with their RPO game, it's going to be a long day defensively. Yeah. And it's just another it's another example. You, you have to leverage the football out on the perimeter extremely well, and then you're going to have to tackle really talented guys in space. Yep, that's right. They're going to make you do it over and over, especially when you open up the, the floodgates like that. Like, that's not containing the football. That's a flyby, and you open up a huge window outside. Uh, you've got to shut it down and squeeze that hole. But the main culprit is you can't fight under that block. Just keep coming across it. I You're feel fine. like you've got the leverage right there. This guy and you, this guy right here. You're not friends right now. I feel like you're I feel like you're very angry at him. Well, he's lined up on the line of scrimmage. The guy's standing right inside of him right there. You can see how it fits. He is outside of the guy on the point and inside of seven. I mean, just stay there. That is a hell of a block by was that DeAndre Moore? Zero? Yeah, it's a good block. I mean, that he is getting after him. And that's that's another, I mean, it sounds simple, but OU's defensive back is going to have to win, man. They're going to have to get off blocks. Well, this is like the cliche, the, the do your job. Like We get so mad whenever we hear everyone say, well, you just got to do your job. I mean, that is it. Just stay in the right position and you got another no gain or, or a short game, perhaps. Seven's good. Stop. That's another great 15. Great scheme. That's a that's a great job by six. No eye contact. Just get back on the field. Get back to the huddle. What nope, I like not even looking at you. How often Sark likes to use the bunch trips or just like the true trips with the nub side tied in. Well, when you think about it, when you just when you look at the the formation, right? One of the things we're talking about how they make you defend everything horizontally. He he likes to do it. He likes to condense the formation and then expand you mm -hmm. in both directions. I mean, it's he is he is one of the best play callers and play designers in all of college football. Like he's he's very, very good and they've got a lot of talent. Talent. So I yep. I mean it just is what it is. Good football team. Seven can go. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that, but I'm going to continue <laughs> keep continuing to say. All right, let's look at two more. We've got one more RPO throw to look at, and then we've got one where they actually hand it off, and you can see what happens when you don't leverage it properly when they hand it off. But first, all oh, you tailgaters, listen up. We are now officially in the premium conference of college football and you expect a premium product on the field and on the grill. That's why you need Deer Ranch's steak burgers to take your tailgate to the next level. Proudly raised in Oklahoma for over 120 years, premium beef this good is hard to come by. Go to DeerRanch.com. That's D-I-D-I-E-R Ranch.com. Use promo code Oklahoma15 for 15% 15 off your order. Deer Ranch, tradition plays better and tastes better. You are, you're, you're looking at, this is trips, right? Instead of the condensed bunch formation. But it's just, it's another example of their their run game, the RPO coming off it. And they're just running like a little tackle pull play here. When you, when you look at kind of how they're blocking things up front, you've got the center and the backside guard going here. You just got this tied in, kind of digging this guy out. This, this tackle is pulling around for this front side backer and you're just manning it on the front side. It's kind of just man pull scheme. Um, it, it, it's good. I mean, it's just, it's simple, but you look at, you look at what they're doing here. And I, I think once again, it's just, it's counting. Hey, how many, how many guys are in the box? And you've got, you've got your four defensive linemen here. 
you've got this guy who is at the line of scrimmage and is immediate threat. And then you've got these two backers. So four plus one plus two is seven. Once again, you're in 11 personnel. You only have the one tied in and the one back. So I think this is one of those situations, Ted, where, hey, you show me seven, I'll throw it outside. And this is different, right? This isn't the the bubble that we saw out of the tight bunch. This is now just a little out route wide receiver screen. And once again, you have to leverage the football properly. Another 15 yards. Just the easiest well, throws, easiest pitches and catches in another 15 yards. Here's the thing. like Whenever you go back and you watch this time, right? if you pause it right before we make con- the, the cheetah player, right there, he's inside of zero, which just like we saw last time. But there's no reason to contact and run past. You're just opening up a huge hole. Just contact, stay inside, stay right there, condense the hole for your safety that's coming down in space. The other guy needs to fight to control the outside, and the safety can come down and make the play. Now, easier said than done. That's a lot of space there, but, I mean, that's how you're going to have to play it every single time. you got to make it a little bit harder on them than just flybys on the inside. Squeeze right. that blocker into the hole. Yeah, make – Make the the alley that these guys have to run in, make it as small as you can while keeping proper leverage. Small, defined is what you want. Small and defined. See, that guy, the outside guy is head up. It's not defined. Like, the safety doesn't know if, if he's going to be able to, it looks like, because he can go inside that or outside that block by number five. Yeah. So I'll, you need I'll to give... fight out. Yep. I'll give Texas credit, man. These wide receivers are blocking people. They are. I mean, they're doing they're doing a nice job of mixing it up. And once again, you're gonna have to tackle a really talented guy wearing number seven and in space. You got, and this is why I like that we've got depth at backer because you got to have great pursuit from the inside out. There's the Mike Backer right there, number seven, which you know he falls steps like crazy. There's nothing taking him inside right there at all. So he's running himself out. It's throw right away. He should be like three or four yards closer to the, the play at that. Like those steps and everything are going to matter. That's the difference between not on this play, but making a tackle or lunging, diving, missing a guy, and he's off to the races. And this is contact and another five yards. That's it. Got to tackle well in space. Got to get him on the ground. It's not going to be easy, but – this is what's coming. These runs with these RPOs off of it. And here's another one. Here's the last one we're going to look at. Now, I love this play. I mean, they're they're running stretch. Now, they're in 12 personnel. Now, so the math changes a little bit, right? 12 personnel. You've got a tight end here who, by the way, 85 is a – he is a really good player now. You've got another tight end here. You've got your one running back. So, you got 12 personnel. So, now – you're looking at the box going, okay, I've got seven blockers. What's the box looking like? And when you look here, you've got your four defensive linemen. You've got one, two, three. You're only seeing seven if you're Arch Manning and you're saying, you know what? I'm just going to hand it. And you can see the effect that the RPO has and how they stretch you horizontally at the bottom of the screen with this Will Backer with this Will Backer, Ted, because this guy is going, is just running in this little flat. And as he runs, like his gap expands. Mm -hmm. So he has to expand and it just, it creates one of the biggest holes you'll ever, ever see in the run game. I mean, just look at this. There's confusion and it's not knowing where you're supposed to be. Again, the Mike Backer is out to lunch. There's no idea where he's going. His gap is right in front of him does not need to go out there. Now, he can show to get that double to come off on him, and then he can fall back. But you got a safety coming down to play that gap right there. Just fall back and go make the tackle for loss. You, He's just you, running you himself in the, into a block. You're not thrilled with Mike Backer from Mississippi State. I'm starting, I'm, I'm starting to gather this information. No, I'm not. Look at the numbers. 
You got the outside player. Every single gap is accounted for right there. You could just show, let the double come off to help your defensive lineman fall back. Or, hell, go run through right now and make a tackle for loss three yards behind the line of scrimmage. That would be cool. Just I will don't say, do that. Just don't stack right over your defensive lineman and run yeah. right into the double team. But this is this is why you have to know where your players are, where you fit on every run. I I think he's probably thinking it's like insert with the with the Y off on the other side. Now, if there's a blocker that comes across, yeah, they're creating another gap over there, and you've got to get front side. But that's not the case here. Also, three technique at the bottom. You you only have to hold your gap for so long. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe maybe come back into the fold and try to try to help out there a little bit, just a little bit. But yeah, this is this is what they do now. Interesting at the end of this run, Jaden Blue fumbles, and Oklahoma has been very good at forcing fumbles this season. And Jaden Blue fumbled twice against Mississippi State. It's just. It's just something to something to take note of. Yeah. And, you know, we jarred some balls out last year, and no one really even hits him that hard here because the safety at the end of the play is what I call herding chickens. Like, you got color all around. You should go up there and saw that guy in half. I mean, full speed. But he's, you know, he's moving herding chickens back there. And doesn't ever really get much on him. Somehow, someone punches the ball loose, though. Herding chickens. You know, oh. like, can't you imagine out in the yard trying to get the chickens through the through the gate? <laughs> That's so good. Uh, speaking of so good, watch the center here. And I, this is a great combo block. Uh, center left guard, and I think with what I've seen on tape, Jake Majors. Texas's center. I, I think that I was impressed with him last year, but remember he got hurt last year. And I thought that their their line struggled in, in OU Texas because he got hurt. But he's playing really, really good football. I, I think he is he's taking better care of his body. He's looking a little leaner. And he's moving really, really well. I was really impressed with how he handled the guys from Michigan in the interior. Those guys are both going to be first rounders. And he won more battles than he lost in that That's football game. By. But that Left is good, too. He peels him out of there. Yep. Great combo. It would be nice if someone on the second level would show up, though, to where that guy's not holding 700 pounds for two and a half, three seconds. Yeah. Good by Banks. You know, you're, you're not going to be able to reach every guy when you're running stretch like that. So he just, but he just widens them so much that, I mean, there's just, there's a gaping hole for that safety to come make a play in space. And then your favorite, Mike linebackers lost Ted. Yeah. Tough. I mean, they give you eye candy all over the place and uh, they, they got the really good skill position players. We saw seven. They block well on the perimeter tied ends, a good blocker. I mean, you're, there's really no weakness across the entire offense. You know, it, everyone is super, super solid. I think the key for OU's defense is because they have great they have a great drop back pass game. They've got they've got talented wide receiver. Uh, I think they've got really they've got a really good play action package as well. But I think the key is is controlling this stuff, right? The run game and then the RPO game that's built off all this variety that Sarkeesian has in the run game. I think if you can minimize the damage in these types of concepts that we just looked at, then you got a great chance of playing good defense against this offense. If you can't hold them to minimal gains on a regular basis in this type of stuff, then it's just going to be a long, long day, man. Yeah. And, you know, I will say that this stuff is typically, like, we are really good on most of the, the art, like, the bubble stuff that we saw here on the RPO game. 
we usually defend that really well because our cheetahs now, you got Desan Makola coming back, hopefully, that is really good at that stuff. Omasigo is a bigger physical player that's harder to block, linebacker type body, but you have to be on the right side of those blocks. I don't know. I, I feel like we just educated OU fans. I don't know if we made them feel better or worse about what's going to happen on Saturday, but that's just, they're good, man. Just, if you just get, be where you're supposed to be, you can, you can contain the offense, but they make it very difficult on you. No doubt about that. We'll have another in the weeds later in the week. We'll take a look at some of the things that Texas defense has done well and also some of the things where, you know, they've given up some big plays, but please make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, as always, if you really enjoyed this, you can give us a super thanks down this way. But other than that, it's all we got for this edition of In the Weeds.